Hi, you're with Chandeep at Goodly once again. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the if error function in Power Query. Now, there isn't any if error function technically in Power Query, but what we have is a try and the otherwise statement, which nearly works as the same as if error, just as the way that you work it in Excel. But the try and the otherwise statement takes it to a whole new level altogether. Guys, let's just do it together, the if error or the try and the otherwise statement in Power Query. All right, let's just start with a really simple example, which is where I'm trying to write the if error or the try and otherwise in each row of a particular table. Really simple data, we have the employee ID, we have the total pay and the total hours. I'd like to find out what is the uh, pay per hour, which means that I'd like to divide every number of the total pay divided by the total hours and that will give me per hourly pay. Let's just do that. So I'm just going to go to the add columns right here, create a custom column. And in the custom column, I'm going to write a very simple function, which is take the total pay, divide that by the total hours. Uh, that's good enough. I'm just going to say, OK, once I do that, it yields me an error in this particular row because one of the total hours was mentioned as nil. Now, that was a human error. Somebody just wrote that as a text entry in that particular column. Now, you can obviously go correct that in Excel or in the data entry, but let's just try to use try and otherwise just to mitigate the error. If in case there are errors in this particular column, let's just not show the errors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my formula once again and try to rewrite the formula. Now, there isn't any uh, if error, we have try. So we, let's just write the word try all in lowercase. So let's just say that I say try this particular formula and I write whatever expression, whatever formula that I have, I just write that. Uh, if this formula gives an error, I can then say otherwise, which is again a lowercase and I can do anything after that. So I can just say that maybe null or zero or whatever you'd like to write. If I say okay on this particular column, you can see that now there are no errors and we just get a null. This is just showing you an error because it's taking it from the preceding step. I can just go back to the source, come back here and there are no literal errors on this particular column. All right, let's just move on and work with example number two, which is where the try and the otherwise statement just doesn't happen in every single row of the data as we just saw, but it also happens to the entire step, right? Take a look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take my entire query right here and detect data types for every single column that we have. So I'm going to go to the transform tab and say the data type of every single column is something or the other. And then maybe I'll just delete one of the columns. I'm just trying to build an error and just trying to show you through an example. So I'm just going to delete that column and I will take the removed column steps and put it before the change type, right? So now what I'm saying is that I create that column, extra column that I have, and then I remove that column, which I created, and then I change the type. And in that particular change type, I am going to trying to apply the type to that column that I just deleted. Obviously, it's going to give me an error because it's not able to find that column on which the change type step is applied. Now, again, an error, right? But this time, the difference is that the error happened on the step of the query, not in the row of the table. We can still use a try and the otherwise right here as well. So what I'm going to do is in this particular formula, I'm going to start writing with the try statement. And here is the entire code, the M code that delivers me the entire table or the output of that particular step, right? Now, after that step, I'm just going to write otherwise. And I'm going to say that if this entire step or the entire function gives you an error, that's fine. Why don't you actually refer yourself to the previous step, which does not give you the error, right? So I can say a hash. That's right. I can say something like a, a hash and then say removed columns. All right. If I now press enter, you can see that it just works fine. So what I have been able to do is write a try and the otherwise in a row, but also write the try and otherwise to an entire step when it delivers you an error and you can reference it back to anything else. Now, this could have been a literal table. This could have been a list or a singular value, but I'm just trying to explain that try and the otherwise not only works with a row of the table, but also with the entire step. Let's just move on to example number three. All right, I'm here on example number three, and this time I'm not going to write the try and otherwise, but I'm only going to write the try without the otherwise. Now, this is where Power Query try and otherwise supersedes what we have in Excel in terms of if error. The same example, example number one, but slightly different way. Take a look. We are string trying to calculate the pay per hour, but I am not going to write anything in the otherwise. That means try doing this particular calculation and otherwise nothing. That means I would not even write the otherwise statement right here. I'm just going to get rid of that part. And let's see what happens if I commit to this with only the try statement. 
I'm just going to commit and this actually gives me a record. Let's open up the record and see what do we have inside of that. I'm going to click on the open or the expand, click on load more and we get three columns, has error value and the actual error. Let's just see what do we get. I'm going to open it up. It actually tells me that if the try delivered you an error or not, and that's where you have the true and falses. If you have a true, it delivered you an error. If you have a false, it did not deliver you an error. And uh, in terms of value, there was no value returned because it was an error. And what is it? This is the record. Let's just open up the record and see what do we have in this particular column. I'm just going to open it up again. And it gives me a reason, a message and a detail. Let's just open it. So it tells you that why did you get an error? So it, it just told you the actual error that you would have seen in, in case you would have opened up the error itself. So expression error. Then it tells you the message of the error. We cannot apply the operator to divide operator to number and a text. And here I have furthermore details of the error itself. Let's just open this also up and let's just see what do we have. So I'm going to open it up further and it says operator left and right. I'm just going to say OK. And it actually delivers you uh, some particulars about what the actual error was on that particular row. So we are trying to divide uh, like a divide operator. 200 by ABC and that's the reason why we have got the error. Let's just load all of this into Excel and let's just make a few tweaks with our data and let's just see what do we get. So I'm just going to click on close and load and load this table into my Excel right here. Now let's just go over to the source data and start to make any changes to the data and let's just see if these errors actually update or not. So I'm just going to go back to sheet number one and um, maybe this time I am going to make a uh, a change to some other row this time so I'm just gonna write maybe no hours press enter and I am just going to go to the data and right click and just do a refresh and you can see that the actual errors do change from uh, that particular row to this row and we have like no hours here the error is true right here no value return and the expression error, error and all of that stuff let's just see that if I try to make a step error, is this going to handle this or not? That means that currently the name of the column that we have is called total hours. What if I change the name of the column and maybe call this as only hours? Let's just see. This, if I had done that in Power Query, it would have resulted in a step error. That means the query would break because it would not really find the total hours column that we initially had it and it's just going to tank. So let's just take a look. So if I go back to the data, right click and hit a refresh, it actually gives you that all the rows have an error and it actually tells you the expression error and the um, message as well. So this is a very crude way of doing some very basic error reporting on your data in case your data has any errors. You can do some very, very preliminary error reporting on this particular technique. All right, that was all about the try and the otherwise statement in Power Query. Now, I'd like to leave you with two articles. One is from Ben Guibardo, if I'm just saying his name right. He has written a phenomenal article on uh, handling different perspectives of errors in Power Query. That's one. And I'd also want you to take a look at a Microsoft documentation on the try and the otherwise statement. These will actually lead you further to explore try and the otherwise statement. What I have been able to do is just try to explore try and the otherwise right now in this particular video. But maybe I'll do another video, which is where I'll explicitly talk about that. How can you do some very sophisticated error reporting in Power BI uh, using Power Query or in Excel using Power Query? All right, that was all about it. If you have any questions, please leave a comment and I'll be glad to reply. In the end, a quick shout about my DAX and my Power Query courses in case you're starting out with Power BI and you need help with right from scratch to build up your fundamentals first and then proceed on to solving more challenging problems, I'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be highly beneficial. Thanks so much for spending time with me and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers. Bye.